Hi and welcome back to my new video. The time has finally come. I'm done with my Japanese exam and I'm gonna start to learn Korean. In this video, I just want to walk you through the whole process of basically making a study plan for the rest of 2022. But Korean for me is more of a really long-term plan. So I want to learn Korean over the next couple of years, get really good at it. But I don't think it makes sense to plan out the next couple of years of studying. So instead, I will just kind of plan the beginner stage and what I'm planning on doing and so on and so forth. Obviously, the study plan is based on my goals and my previous experience with learning languages, but also some advice that I found online by other people that either are learning Korean or have already gotten really good at Korean. Before starting any language, I think it is a good idea to define your goal very clearly so that you know what you're working for. For me, that is being fluent in Korean. Yes, I said it. I said the cursed F word. I want to be fluent, but I know that that is obviously not something I can achieve in like a couple months or even like a year. So Korean is, as I just said, a long-term plan. Being fluent doesn't really say much, so the real goal for me is to hold conversations about topics that I'm interested in without too much strain on either party of the conversation. And I know that that is still very abstract, but I know what it feels like to be at that level, so I can work with that. Right now, my Korean knowledge is limited to a few letters of the alphabet, so how do I go from like basically knowing nothing to actually being useful. The answer is consistent dedication over a long period of time. So my overall goal is to get fluent, then let me plan 2022 a little bit. Remember, I like to set my goals extra high just to give myself that extra push to challenge myself a little more than I would have otherwise. So for 2022, I wrote down that I want to read five books. Now, I'm not going to be super strict on whether I read a web novel or a real novel or maybe just even a graded reader, but I want to consume five pieces of written media. I would also like to f either film a video in Korean by the end of the year or participate in a quote-unquote real conversation. And I know that both of those are probably going to be really basic, pretty bad, but I don't want to wait with my output until I'm like two years into learning the language because I don't want the gap between my output and my comprehension to grow too big. My last goal for 2022 is to get familiar with the Korean keyboard and I know this might sound a little random, but I know that most of my interactions are probably going to be online in written form, so I might want to get familiar with the keyboard both on my phone I do want to make sure that I know how to text people and like where all the keys are and so on. Even though I'm not going to be focusing on talking to people this year, I still want to make sure that once I do start doing that, I don't have to learn where every single key is before I can actually start texting people. So the goals are five books, a conversation or a video in Korean, and at least a little bit of familiarity with the Korean keyboard. Okay, as a next step, I break those big goals down into smaller monthly or even weekly goals. I think the most important thing for me right now is to brush up on my Hangul so that I actually know what is written in the textbooks or the websites that I'm going to use, because relying on romanization is kind of cringe to be honest. I know that from the end of February through March, I will be pretty busy, so I'm not gonna dive too much into studying at that time. But I do think that that is pretty much the perfect time to start acquiring vocabulary through Anki. For that, I downloaded the Korean 1K refold deck, which just contains 1,000 of the most common words. And I'm gonna go through that at about 10 to 15 words a day. By the end of March, I should then be at about 600 to 800 words. Additionally, I would also like to spice it up a little bit with an app and I thought Lingo Deer might be the perfect app for that. Something that gamifies the learning experience a little bit, keeps the vocabulary fresh in my head, and introduces me to the basic grammar. Speaking of grammar, I would also like to have a sort of grammar guideline, but I don't really feel like paying for a textbook because there are so many resources out there for beginner Korean learners. 
I found a website called How to Study Korean and they seem really well structured so I might use that and I will probably go through it at about one to two lessons a week which should then bring me to about you know two to three at the end of the year. Maybe this is way too ambitious but you know I can always readjust and I'd rather aim a little higher than too low. But so with this grammar study, I probably won't start until April because that is when most of my uni stress will be over and I will have a baseline of vocabulary that I can actually use to understand what the grammar that they're trying to teach me is about so that I can then just focus on the grammar rather than on the vocab and the grammar. I forgot to mention this, but obviously I already know Japanese and Japanese and Korean grammar are supposedly pretty similar so I hope that I won't be struggling too much, but I guess I'll have to find out. Sometime in summer I will then start reading on link for my reading practice and more vocabulary acquisition. I am afraid that link is just as bad for Korean beginners as it is for Japanese beginners and so I'm hoping that by the time I start reading link, I will have enough vocab and a good enough grammar understanding to to parse the text and maybe recognize the mistakes that the parser of Link makes. In fall, I'm then planning on continuing to read, obviously, but I also want to start speaking practice. What I'm going to do for that is probably go through the IPA chart again so that I know what the sounds are supposed to sound like and that I can practice them in isolation. So what I'm then probably going to do is record myself, send that to natives and get my pronunciation corrected a little bit just to make sure that I'm starting off on the right foot. Then in the winter, I will try to combine all my skills and I will probably use journaling for that, see if there is an active Korean community. I'll start just maybe writing a really short essay, self-introduction, what I'm up to and all the really simple stuff, get that corrected by other people and then read those texts out loud. Obviously, I'm not going to be good by the end of the year. I'll very likely still be in the beginning stages of my learning journey, but I think it is good to go into language learning with that mindset because if you expect to be fluent in like half a year, you're just going to end up disappointed. Languages take time and dedication and a sprinkle of good methods and eventually you'll get there. So for now, let me get started with my Korean Anki deck, start building that foundation and we'll see where I am in a couple of months. If you're interested in following along on this journey of me learning Korean, then please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.